Hi everyone, welcome to episode 7 of Thief. Uh, in this episode we're going to get into sculpting the hands, which is going to be a, a more exciting uh, probably than sculpting the clothes, but you know, we've got a few things we got to work on first, and that includes more cloth. Uh, I'm finishing up the legs here, so so you want to make sure that whatever element you put on the model has a logical uh, uh, continuity with the rest of the figure. So the pants need a place where they end, and so I'm getting in here and adding where the straps would be behind the knee for the knee pad, and then also having a, a place where the fabric of the pants actually ends. You know, that's just sort of part of the whole process, of course, is making sure that it makes sense. Now getting down here, I create a new shape from the foot and then start sculpting more of the shoe. Uh, it's the same as what I did with the pants. And if this were traditional sculpting, it's the same sort of procedure that you would follow there where you would have the underlying form hardened before you add more material on it. And that way I can make sure that I don't uh, carve in deeper than where her foot would be. You know, just jumping around, cleaning up where I see places that need cleaning up. And I talked about that in the last episode, just always making sure that I'm open to correct things as I go, because uh, you don't always catch everything all at once. It takes some time of looking at the model to make sure that everything is detailed and clean. Now here we go guys, we're getting into the actual hand. When, when I sculpt a hand, I follow a similar process as I do when I draw a hand. And uh, there's an awful lot of theory that can go into creating hands. Hands are an extremely expressive and important part of the human body, and also extremely complicated. Uh, there are as many bones in your hands and feet as the rest of your body. Um, actually, I better fact check that. I think it might be half of the bones in your body are in your hands and feet, uh, but both of those statements might be true. Anyways, uh, I start by creating the, the palm or the back of the hand. Uh, and so with the carpals and, and metacarpals in place, I have the general shape of the hand, whether it's open or closed, I can sort of visualize that. And then creating new shapes, I, I'm able to add the fingers and thumb. I like to start with the thumb. Uh, the thumb behaves quite differently and independently from the other fingers, so getting in and getting the thumb helps define what the rest of the hand is doing. Now I put a sphere there, uh, she's going to be holding like a smoke bomb. And so by having the sphere there, I have uh, the collision point and I can understand exactly what the hand is doing, why it's closed and what it's gripping around. And that gives me a, a better sense of exactly how it should be positioned and posed. So I just create kind of a cylinder. I sculpted it into like more of a finger, stylized finger shape. And then as I work through, I am selecting it at the different joints and trying to make a definite bend in the finger at each of the joints. Now, uh, like using the bone markers in the rest of the body, you can use the knuckles as uh, markers for uh, measuring and making sure the hand has structure in it. So I go into each of the fingers and I mark the knuckles with uh, a little bit extra material. And then, and then I'm able to use that as a method to make sure that there's structure to the hand. Uh, it's easy for hands to turn into like kind of weird little blobs and uh, if you've painted models I'm sure you've painted hands that were weird and funny um, or too small or way too big and that's I mean that's part of the challenge of sculpting hands like this hand I'm sure as you look at it now looks enormous but um, when we get the 3d print of this I think you'll find that it's it's actually pretty reasonable and you wouldn't be able to comfortably paint it 
if it was much smaller. I'm not an expert at balancing exactly the size and shape, but that's why I'll get a rapid prototype before I uh, order a high resolution print of this model. Now what I did there is I merged all of the shapes together and then made a copy of the hand and like mirrored it on the other side. And so because it is a perfect mirror copy, it is going to go from being a left hand to a right hand. And then I'm able to clean it up a little bit and then get it in position to be the other hand. Now as I work through positioning each of the fingers and everything, I think I probably would have been better off just making a new hand. It was less frustrating to make the first hand than get the second hand to work. And I mean, that's how it goes sometimes. You, you try to find the best way to sculpt and it doesn't always work out perfectly. But um, I think the hand is fine once it's in place. I did a uh, tutorial about how to draw hands a little while back, and basically what I arrive at is, you know, you want to think about the palm and the different shapes and the fingers and blah, 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 blah. But ultimately what it comes down to is an intimate understanding of the anatomy of the hand and the behavior of the hand, the way fingers um, group, the way fingers move, uh, the way people hold their hands, and so what that ultimately comes down to, along with all art, is a love of your content and the, the fact that you're making art because you really love and admire life. And so uh, I'd say my best advice for learning how to work with hands or something complicated like that is to love it. <laughs>